We've explored the main page and documented that here as an outline. I've just cleaned up a little bit because I realized we have basically the top menu, then we have this sort of mid-level menu, and then we have these widgets. I'm going to go into a course, and I just adjusted that so we have top menu, second level, and then the main page, so everything under the second level. I'm going to go ahead and go into an empty course now. Um, in this case, I'll pick Web 115, which is a class I actually have to teach very shortly. And I won't put too much real content in there just because it takes time to go get it and cut and paste, but I'll be using that as a model. So my first reactions are that, hey, the top looked pretty much the same. The difference is this course number replaced what was there before. So I've already forgotten what was there before. So I go back and there was nothing there before. So the course actually occupies this big white space, which I guess is okay. Um, I kind of expected it to be down below because as a web guy, I typically reserve the top for branding or institutional information. I wouldn't really expect the course information to be there, but it doesn't seem to hurt. Now it's a link and that's a little bit puzzling. I see that the course ID here is 6769. Now I click that link and I suspect it's just going to take me right back to where I was, which was a little bit puzzling. Um, so that looked the same. It's still a link. The URL is D2L Home 6769. Now if I go here and check it out, I'll go to the very same course in the drop down. I don't know if we want to call that a grid button or what. And so the difference is what? The difference is we have one, two, three, four, five, six widgets there and no footer. We have an option down here. Remove the banner. Ah, oh, okay. So let's remove the banner. Once again, I can't just click it. It's very frustrating. Okay, there's no banner. I'm going to click this one again. And I think I'm pretty much seeing the same page. Can I go add the banner to that? Let's go ahead and click it. Display homepage banner. And that's there. And what about this item here? Change image, customize banner text, remove this banner. So presumably I have that option only as a teacher, but we learned before that we could explore what it might look like as a learner. So I'll click on my name and view as a learner or student. All these high tech learning terminology. And one assumes, oh, that option is there. Change image, remove this banner. So that's, I would be curious if a student could change the banner. I mean, I guess who am I to say no, right? But so I'm going to ask, let's see, top, uh, top icon menu identical except course name is added and a clickable link. Why? Where does it go? So I must have missed something here because I'm not quite sure what that's doing. Maybe when you're in a sub page that just stays as a link so that you can get back to the home page of that course, which would kind of make sense. I'm not sure that it makes sense when you're already on the first page, but that's kind of a common navigation item. When a can a student hide change the banner? It'd be kind of funny if a student could go put some not so flattering picture for a course they really hated. Notice also this is not 
it says if it's creating a graphic, it won't let me highlight this. And that's a little bit frustrating because in the past, I think I've had students want to just copy and paste that. And I've wanted to copy and paste that. And I had to go up here and copy and paste that instead. And, you know, that just seems unnecessary that you shouldn't be able to grab this. But I'm actually curious if it's a graphic. And it looks like if it is, it's done in CSS. So we can't just quickly view it. So there's some options there. Um, dot, dot, dot at bottom allows um, show hide banner. And what else do we have? We have secondary menu. Secondary menu has a lot more. And let's have a look at what we've got. We've got course home. Content. And it's probably good for me to write these down, but not for people who have to watch that. I'm going to copy all of these. And don't you love it? Clear formatting. Break the links. And we'll see where each one of these goes. I'm also curious what they look like to students. Course tools is one option and help is another. And these are drop down. Drop down. And we want to know where they go. So these, this course tools drop down leads to come on. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I cannot copy that, which is a drag. So I will have to type it. Announcements, checklist, groups, quizzes, surveys, class list. I wonder if they've taken a cue from others and decided not to use the word tests. Just call them quizzes. I think Moodle started that. And then under help, drop down. We have video tutorials, documentation. You can see I'm not a seasoned recorder with this sort of stuff because you're getting all kinds of work related things popping up. All right, so that's the gist of it. Now, I suspect clicking Course Home is the same as clicking up here. We'll try that. Does anything change? You can see it's just Brightspace. It's our domain, d2l slash home 6769. And that takes us there. This menu all stays the same. If I hover over this and look at the bottom, 6769. So at the moment, there seem to be three ways to go to the course, either with the tic-tac-toe grid, with the course link up here, and then the course home link. So that's pretty straightforward. And um, same as name link at top or drop down from tic Attack grid. I'll make up a name for that. And then let's see. So if we click content, we also now have the 
those are all in the menu but when we get out of the menu we have main page and I guess we're calling these widgets so we're gonna call we're gonna do a d2l visual toc widget updates widget d2l welcome widget announcements widget calendar widget uh, to capitalize or not to capitalize and then d2l teacher profile d d2l teacher profile widget I guess I could see how they're capitalized here. Collapse this widget, not capitalized there. So that has collapsed. Um, so the calendar is the same as the other one. Same as from main page. Announcements, I'm gonna assume is the same. Go to announcements tool, RSS notifications. Same as from main page, page, or just for this class. Just for this class. I'm guessing it's just for this class, but that could be a little bit confusing because, well, if you depending on the view you looked, you could miss some things. Um, so we'll have to figure that out. There's some questions. And what else? Okay, updates. There are no current updates. I wonder how an update is different from... Let's go ahead and collapse the widget. And collapse the widget. And collapse the widget. So all the others just have this collapse widget. And then expand, collapse and expand. Um, collapse, expand, not very exciting so far, hopefully something will come at updates widget, detail welcome widget, one presumes that's for students as well, teacher profile widget. All right, so that's all we got on this main page. And I'll go ahead and expand them. Not that there's anything to see. There are no current updates. Um, welcome to the course, launch the quick guide. So, um, welcome to the course and launch the quick guide. And if we click that, we have a delay. Mm -hmm. Click it again. Doesn't like us. Launch the quick guide, launch the, well, that's not useful. If I open it, I can't open it. So I'm going to reload the main page. I wonder if collapsing the widget prevents the quick guide from loading. Now I click it. I sure hope it's not like flash or something like that. Um, I couldn't get it to launch. Now, I know that's not a question mark, but I'm going to put a question there because those are things that need to be resolved later so I can search on them. Um, I'll try full screen, see if that makes any difference. It does not. So notice the graphics. It's sort of cut off on the widget side, and that's it's a little shabby when we click it. So I wonder if it's using a script or something that got disabled. Uh, we'll see. 
so that was a bust announcements we've got no announcements yet and teacher profile wait a minute am i still in student profile that would be embarrassing i am in student profile does that mean students don't get a quick guide so to get out of student profile we have to click this x which is not intuitive at all so let's have a quick note there and Where is the view as a learner? To reverse this later, click the X. It's not intuitive. So I'm now as a regular teacher and I don't see any additional options, so no harm done. Um, I can make a new announcement which is good. I can make a new announcement and reorder them. So that's worth considering. And so I will go to the announcements widget and I have to go to announcements tools the same and then I have new and reorder and RSS and notifications. So new announcement, capitalize, reorder announcements. RSS notifications. And I cannot collapse this widget. Ah, that's funny. So remove that option there. I wonder if I cannot also collapse the calendar widget. You can collapse the calendar. That's funny. Okay, no collapsing you. And now I try one last time to launch the quick guide. No quick guide for me. Right, let's look at it. So while we're here, let's go ahead and make an announcement. Go to the announcements tool. No, I'm going to just do new announcement. And since I'm on the tool here, I'll take some notes about that. Um, headline. Okay, subject headline, great. Uh, we have display author information, info. And then we have the content. So, welcome to web 115. Web markup and scripting and welcome to your web 115 course I'm looking forward so obviously I have a bigger canned welcome message and a bunch of other information to provide, but we'll leave that for now. We still have to explore the rich text editing. Start date, always show start date. Um, let's go ahead and add that. Availability, uh, show start date. Not sure that I need a start date because I want them to just see the announcement. And need to fix this timeline. It is correct. We're in the right time zone, but I'd feel a little bit better if this said New York or Eastern time zone. But I think Desire to Learn is a Canadian company. And then you can remove it. We have a start date. Uh, start and end dates, including now. The now is kind of cool. It saves you some trouble because you can just say like, do it now, which it does by default. Is is default and created, and then we have attachments.
two. <laughs> Patch. Mints. And they include um, add a file, record audio, record video. Now, I think it would be kind of cool to, you know, make an introduction on video this way. But then you're going to get run into the ADA stuff and, you know, things like that. So I think it encourages people to do what they would otherwise not do. The problem is will be um, other bureaucratic systems interfere with that. So additional, and then we have additional release conditions. So I'm not sure what that is. I'm thinking it might be what we call Blackboard um, adaptive release. So um, that's going to be an interesting one to explore. So attach existing and create and attach and then remove all conditions. And then we finish off with publish, save as draft, and cancel. So I'm going to check out this attach existing. And I assume this is sort of a library of conditions. So you could theoretically say, well, if there was a grade and somebody had something, nothing really here to talk about, but I suspect we could put in, you have to get this certain grade. And now that's actually interesting because that implies that once they do it, they can get the announcement. And that would be cool. Um, for example, if they, you know, have to take the midterm before they get started on the second half, you send an announcement welcoming to the, them to the second half. But we'll have to think about how that might be useful. So that was an existing, let's create an attach. So if I create a new release condition, let's see what there are. Similar, so with the assignments, we have lots of things. Um, I like no submission to folder. Hey, you slackers, there's been nothing put in that folder you get this announcement and maybe that means the other people don't get that announcement I like the idea of you earn an award you get a little congratulatory message and checklist sounds interesting sounds like it'd be cool to have a checklist i definitely like checklists um when they enroll you know so maybe when they're enrolled they get the announcement that's an interesting idea um, yeah, so there's an awful lot of conditional options here and that, that tool alone looks like it will, um, involve some exploration and cancel that for now and go ahead and publish this. And I have no students in this class. I'm not sure when our students will be added to this particular pilot. But that's the way it looks. And I could easily go add a handful of other ones. So here's like a more typical message. I'm going to go ahead and add the whole thing to see how. Don't you love Blackboard? Um, click to. edit mode. I just want to highlight the text. So I'm going to grab all this and make a new announcement. And paste. And Now I don't see, it does not seem to be auto-filling this um, headline, which is really frustrating to 
to me because I find over the years I start making the same announcements or they're very similar and I just change the week or something and it's just nice at least I've gotten used to Blackboard not having to retype everything every time um, so I wonder if that's a thing so that's a standard one we'll do part one I'm going to need to edit that, what have you. I wonder if there's a preference for this. And on the announcements, I'm going to go ahead and write. Um, I guess I didn't. I was just writing in all these options. So where were they? Yeah, I'm going to move this, all of these items to within the course. Um, Now we've got it in the right place and I'll publish this one. And on that one I did, I showed the start date. So let's see how they compare. Uh, that one has a start date, no end date, has a start date, no end date. So what if I edit it and I don't want the start date? And I will, if unchecked, the start date will be result only in announcements tool. Huh. So it's not clear what the point of that is. Um, I guess if I go and look as a student, then I won't see a start date on that. posted on. So it's actually not so much a start date as a posted date. Um, actually posted date won't be visible to students. So that's easy enough. And then come back and wonder what happens if I go to the announcement tool when I'm logged in as a student. This is what happened here. And it looks like I'm just looking at the announcements, student view. So I have to go back out. And we'll do one other announcement. That was part one. Let's do part two. In this case, I have this safe and sound. So I'm going to experiment. I'm going to go ahead and go out of edit mode. And this time I'm going to grab the HTML because I have this embedded video. And not that I like Blackboard HTML, mind you, but it's an experiment. So I can highlight all of that, jump over, 
and I go to the announcements and I'm looking for a new announcement. Yep, definitely doesn't seem to autofill that, which is makes me very sad. So in here, I will look at my options for going to HTML and didn't mean to click that. That's a lot of, a lot of colors and here we have lots and lots of options, formulas, tables. Um, but it's not there. All right, so let's look down here. We have check spelling, check accessibility, and come on, HTML source editor. So I'll click that. And I will paste my code. Don't know if I care about word wrap. Nope. And save. And that looks pretty good. I cannot uncheck the always show start date, which is annoying. But otherwise, and then we've got weird font stuff going on here. So let's see how we make that a little bit larger. This font is not specified. This font is also not specified, so let's see what I can experiment with. So that still looks a bit big, so I wonder what the default is. Uh, might, that might do it. All right, so publish. And then it looks like the other thing we can do in there is reorder. So I'll click the reorder tool and I can shoot. You don't have drag and drop. That's just kind of sad. So I can make that one the first one and then save it. So it works. It's just, you know, The interface seems to take up a lot of room here, but I'm not sure that that matters all that much. All right, so that's announcements. I think we've now covered basically the widget, just all the widgets that are visible from the front. We've outlined them and we played with announcements because those are sort of the first things you do. In fact, I'm embarrassed to say a lot of times my first announcement will be, don't pay any attention to this course, it'll be done tonight. Um, so in this case, what I will do next is look at my profile. Now I would like to, let's see, this is really bad. My announcements are big. And even if you set it to the smallest announcement of only, smallest listing of only 10, I can't collapse this widget because guess what? Can't collapse the widget. I can collapse this widget and the other widgets, but this widget, which most needs collapsing, collapsing, um, it doesn't seem to be collapsible. Now I also see these X's so you can dismiss them. And if you dismiss them, where do they go? feel like a Cotton Eye Joe thing should be happening because the risk there is you dismiss them. You're not really done with them. They're gone. So the student view, let's revisit that. He was a student. And what are the options there? They can go to the tool, they can dismiss. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dismiss all of these. Boom, boom, boom. So now I just have this blank item here 
and then like oh shoot there was something important there let me go to the announcements tool and it shows them as dismissed so that's okay what's in the option view and restore okay so it's like the equivalent of show unread now if i click view probably just opens that up in its own window okay so that's doable but a little frustrating because i would like to just be able to collapse collapse the widget um, that is a big 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 problem so i'll go back to course home The other thing is I really would expect to be able to move widgets around. And I'm guessing that that's an option that our admin people have turned off because that's just the nature of admin people, I think. We wouldn't want teachers to all make their courses look different. So I'm gonna look at the teacher profile. All I've got is collapse this widget. I've got Mike, the instructor about me and a Facebook and a Twitter link, but there's nothing here. So I don't really have any idea what on earth that's supposed to be. I can't click it, I can collapse it. It's not even my name and my name is definitely in the system. So I have to resist like asking somebody for help in a snarky way because it just it doesn't make sense that this is even here if you can't edit it and I've looked through all the editing options and there don't seem to be any but before I give up entirely I will click on D2L teacher I will Google documentation and I'm just gonna search for teacher profile And I got nada. Oh, there it goes. Leaderboard, awards permission, change personal settings. Um, and no. So if I Google it, D2L, right space, uh, D. 2L teacher profile. See what that gives us. There's a little tutorial here. Um, and I don't see that. Editing your D2L profile. That is a tutorial at Winona. And that's just taking me to the profile that we already saw. Now, in this example, we have nickname, hometown, homepage, social networks, and all of that is uh, turned off in our case. So that's uh, frustrating and, I guess, typical. So I will have to report that to the authorities because when we go up to our profile here, we'll let, oh, see, I did it again. I'm logged in as a student. So I'm going to log out, go back to being faculty, and maybe now I can edit it. Glad I caught that before I vented. Now we go down, D2L teacher profile. Okay, now we have this option to edit and I don't know why this would be different from the teacher but what the heck D. Ivan Breeson can't do lowercase that's kind of sad so we have titles now at our school and I got my professor title so why not or I can just say, um, your instructor for this course, 
and I run racing. All right, so I don't know why this is here. I really don't. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, unless there's no other way for the students to see the teacher. But why is this profile different from the other profile? So, about me is a title. Um, 240 characters, this is like a Twitter feed. Looking forward to working with you all this term. I've been at CPCC for almost 20 years and done all kinds of cool things. That's what, maybe, maybe that's enough characters for now. Um, my profile has a lot of other stuff that I would like to include. Facebook, um, not sure I want students sending me friend invites. Every now and then they do, but usually I ignore them unless there's reason not to. At least until after they're out of my class. And then I don't particularly want to have Twitter either. So if I leave these blank and then save this, it does remove those, which is good. And then that's just to remove a banner. So if we were to update that D12 teacher profile, um, we're going to add heading text, 32 GARs, all upper, upper case, and display name, title field, 32 errors, um, description field, 240 errors, Facebook field, Twitter field. I gotta think there's a lot more to this that's disabled. Why is this not tied to the teacher profile shown in the top? And then what are the options? We can also um, uh, background, background color change on widget header. And then we can upload a picture. Upload, remove image. Yeah, so one of my frustrations with Blackboard is that you create a nice profile for yourself and then you have to basically copy it to every course. What was great about Moodle is that you had one profile and that was you and every course could see the profile and it also applied to students. Blackboard didn't have any profile for students so I wonder if yeah, no, we saw that students couldn't edit this. It'd be cool if students could make their own widget for their profile. So I guess that's enough for this one.